Edgar, thanks, thanks for your time, mate. Um, really appreciate that. Um, I, I read, oh, in fact, I saw you on with Ak and Barack talking about moving out of um, moving out of New York. You've moved to Tampa permanently. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And um, when did that happen? Uh, about six months ago. Okay. Um, yeah. And is it is it right you built a house down there? Yeah, yeah, I built a house from scratch. Yeah. Oh wow! So how long yeah. was that? How long did that project take? Uh, it took about uh, eight months. But um, I started build. We started building it like right after, right after um the Quigley fight. Well, a little bit before the Quigley fight. Right. So was it like go and find a plot of land, get an architect? Like, what's the process of building a house? Yeah. Um. Well, we we went into a community out here, and then like we started from scratch. So then we we designed our house how we wanted it. How many bedrooms, you know, like just we designed everything the way we wanted it. And I wanted a long driveway, so I got that. So now I'm up, I could fit about like 20 cars on my driveway. So you got 20 cars yet? No, nah, not yet. But <laughs> you know, like when when I have like, you know, family events and stuff or like the holidays, and I always, I always wanted a, a long driveway. I feel like that, that looked so dope. And now, like in my community, a lot of people got short driveways, so I'm the only one with the longest driveway. So that, it pushes um, my house yeah. more back, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that from watching MTV Cribs or what? Like, what yeah, is it yeah, about? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the long driveway. What else? Um, what other details on the house did you, like, insist on? Like, when you've got a blank canvas, it must be nice to just be able to choose whatever you want. Yeah, Um, I got a, like, a, I did, we, we, we did, like, an office room. I did, um like a media, I'm rebuilding, well, after this time, we're going to build like a media room for me and my girl so we could like start doing like media things and, you know, all that extra stuff for like YouTube and stuff. And so we're going to build that. We got like a, we got an upstairs um where it's like an open area. So we're going to make that like the, like a lounge type area where I'm going to put like a, I got a, I got like a 90 inch, but I want to put like, a, I want to put a bigger TV up there. Mm. So and, you're um, you're really um laying down roots then in Tampa like yeah, that's, yeah. that's the move yeah for sure mm. what was the what was the thinking behind that because you're a Brooklyn boy right yeah from Brooklyn yeah. Mm. Brooklyn I'm pretty I was pretty much everybody I was that yeah Brooklyn Low East Side um yeah I mean it's different you know I just I feel like right now um I need it for my career you know I think you know living in New York is cool I love New York. You know, I love New York with all my heart, but I think right now, like my career, and then I got a son, you know, I think right now we got to just like really be like isolated, you know, and just really focus on my career. Um, where I'm at um, is like big on sports for kids as, you know, for high schoolers and kids that's in, that's in elementary and stuff. So, you know, I think having my son over here too as well, going to school and, you know, putting him into some type of sports is going to be, is going to be cool. It's a very um, mature move, a very yeah, grown up move. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's different. You know, I got to, I got to start thinking about the future now. You know, I can't, it's not about me no more. It's about him and my family, you know, and obviously and setting myself up for after when I retire from boxing, you know, I still have money, you know, saved and, you know, I got a house now. God forbid anything happens, you know, we set. You um you don't get many long driveways in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I lived in New York probably you know all my life, and as soon as I came out here, boom, I got a house. Like it's mm. crazy. I've been in New York for so long that I was just renting in, in a luxury building, you know, and I didn't even think about getting a house over there. But I come over in, it's like boom, I got a house quick. Mm. There's a lot of things that change, you know. It's crazy because like being in New York, the the environment and the lifestyle, you know, it could catch up to you. <clears throat> always wanting to like, you know, you feel like you got to, you know, keep a certain standard, you know, how you dress and how you look and stuff, you know, because that's New York. New York is like a fashion place. You get what I'm saying? And over here is like, I'm in fucking slippers all day, like literally slippers all day, no haircut for weeks. And I don't get, I don't care. Like, I'm like, it's whatever. Cause you know, there's nobody impressed over here. Like you just, it's just suburbs, you know? So it's, it's pretty cool. Mm, what um what do you miss? What do you miss about New York most? Um, the food. Yeah, definitely the food. One hundred percent. Yeah, the food is amazing over there. 
like after the fight, I'm already planning on like going back with my family. I'm like, yo, we gotta go back for like a week and just hit all the restaurants over there. Cause over here in Tampa, they they're a little suspect with the restaurants, you know. I'm like, I'm not I don't really I'm not really feeling the restaurants over there in New York, you know, you go anywhere and you you go. Mm. And plus everything closed early over here too. So it's like you can't even go get a chopped cheese or or a deli sandwich at one, two o'clock in the morning. You know, you gotta go to like Wild Wilds or something, but it's different. Like New York, you go to Bodega. You're like, yo, uh, let me get, you know, let me get, I want, I want a chopped cheese or let me get a bacon and a cheese and you get, get your sandwich right there, you know? So it's, it's, I'm starting to get used to it, like really, um, like living that Florida life. Yeah. Um, and you said, you mentioned your son there. How old's your son now? Um, he's two. Okay. He's two. So, so yeah. you're, you're through like the whirlwind, like the real baby stage and he's sort of growing He's into still, it. yeah, right. I'm in, I'm in the terrible twos right now. So he's yeah. like, going, he'll be going crazy. I'll be trying to, you know, discipline them, you know, because I know I'm um, around two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years old is like the most important stages. So I try to like my best and like really discipline them now. You know, I know like he's, he's two years old, so he's about to be three in June. So hopefully, you know, sooner than later that, that uh, that uh, you know, it, um, you know, the terrible two stage will, will be gone, you know. Yeah, what do you do at nighttime? Like when you're in camp and that, you got to get some sleep. Are you are you in a different room or what? I'm actually, yeah, I'm sleeping in his room right now on his bed. <laughs> yeah. How big is like, it? How sleep... big's the bed? It's not that big. It's small, but for some reason, I I sleep good. Like I sleep good there. It's not like we got like a. If obviously I fit on it, you know, it's mm. not like I'm like halfway off. I mm. fit on a bed, but um, uh, it's like it's kind of hard. I'm not. I'm a guy that like I like hard beds. Mm. And my my fiance, she doesn't like like she doesn't like um she don't like hard beds. She likes soft beds. So I think when I'm in camp, I like to sleep on hard beds because I feel like I sleep way better. Mm. What um I'm just trying to picture it. What like bed clothes has he got? Like you're a knockout artist. Is it like Thomas the Tank Engine or Power Rangers or something? Like what's on the what's on the duvet covers? Say it again. What's on the duvet covers? Like you know on the bed. Cause he's a he's a little kid. What's what's on the pillowcases? What is it oh, like trains oh, and no, stuff? No, um, on the pillow. Oh yeah, it's uh got dinosaurs. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, I mean, I told I told I told my girl, I'm like, yo, like we gotta. I can't. Yeah, we gotta. It's already two weeks. Now. It's it's time. It's time. I gotta lock in, man. I can't. I can't sleep with you no more. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking um, of it, it's because it's because you got you know big fight coming up next weekend. Yeah, uh, Poddy McCrory is the opponent. What um, what have you got against the Irish? That's two in a row now. Nothing. <laughs> I don't got nothing against the Irish. Man, I love, I love, I love Irish people. You know, I think um, they're amazing. You know, my my um, my manager's uh, he's he's Irish. Mm. You know, but he don't he don't he don't he don't get offended. You know, um, it's boxing at the end of the day. Um, you know, the Irish they they. They had that fight in blood, just like Puerto Ricans, you know. So it's gonna be some. It's gonna be some cool next week. What What was the thinking behind McCrory as an opponent? Obviously undefeated, but not a big name in America. Um, I'm, not, I'm sure you know all about him. But what What was the thinking behind him as a as a opponent? I mean, my team, you know, my team. We was trying to get the Mugia fight. We was trying to make mm. that fight happen for a while, for a couple months. You know, we was going back and forth, but just the numbers they make sense. You know, what I'm saying like just the numbers they make sense. We felt like it wasn't the right time. Like damn, the numbers ain't make sense. So we we could just probably just wait another couple months or maybe a year and then see and then go back. You know, we probably could pick up another one. He picks up a win and then you know we could see from there. But um, my team, you know, my manager, um, they they sent us Pat uh, McCorby and we we liked him as an opponent. You know, what I'm saying mm. he's undefeated. He's tough. You know, he's another Irish man. Um, you know, he's ranked in the in the sanctioning bodies. You know, so we was like, All right, we could take that. You know, he's not a he's not a guy that he's gonna like. He's gonna be, you know, trying to survive and run around the whole ring. You know, like a marathon runner. So you know, I think uh, I think next week is gonna be some some spectacular. Everyone knew, including you, that the um the knockout streak wouldn't go on. Like the one round knockout streak, it wouldn't go on. It couldn't go on. But did you ever think back in what December twenty twenty when you knocked out Ulysses Sierra? Yeah, that that will be the last one for like over three years. Like when you got out of the ring that night, were you like, I'm sure you would just thought like this is going to carry on for now. Did you ever imagine it would be this long? No, no, no. I didn't. 
I don't really like put mine to like to the to like knockouts and stuff unless like I really hate uh, like I unless like I really hate a dude or I just don't like him like at all. Like Ulysses was just a dude that he was just talking so much shit like before the fight, posting up like old videos of me when I was an amateur. And stuff. So I was like, yeah, this dude, I'm, I'm like him. That's why I was chasing him around the ring. I was, I broke, I broke my my bone in the, in the first round. Like after I hit him, I know I hit him like, I was hitting, I hit him probably with like eight right hooks right on his temple, almost broke his skull. And I, I like fractured a little um, bone right here. But like that dude, I wanted to kill him. Like I wanted, I wanted to put him in the hospital. I wanted to. I wanted to hurt that dude so bad. And I told him, I said, I'm a, I'm a, I could curse him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was like, yo, I'm going to fuck you up, dude. Like, we got into an argument, like, during the um, wings and stuff. I was like, I'm going to fuck you up, bitch. Like, I was, I was going crazy. Yeah. I had, like, evil eyes, bro. I was like, yeah, this dude, that guy, I wanted, I wanted, him, he was, like, the first real first one not got one, you know? Yeah, yeah. But all the first, all the first round knockers, it was cool. Like I wasn't like really like thinking about, oh, I gotta get a first round knocker. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, it was just coming naturally. You got this crazy buzz around you because of that streak. Do you feel any pressure now to get the knockout because of who you are and because of your name? Um, no, nah, not pressure. I just, I just feel like fans, like certain fans, think like I'm a bum. or like I'm not, I'm, a, I'm a hype job because I'm not knocking nobody out no mm. more. You know, but you got guys. You know, like <clears throat> you got guys that uh, that don't knock nobody out, and they're like, they're like, oh, he's the greatest fighter ever. You know, mm. oh my guy, he's the great. You know, so like guys like me, guys like uh, like Tank, guys like like Tiafimo, guys like um, you know, knockout artists. That got, like that's the only stuff that sucks about it. You know, is that when you do go to distance, it's like yo, you a bum. Like when Tank went to distance with Cruz. It was like, oh, he lost the fight. He lost that fight. Oh, he's 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 not the same. I'm like, yo, bro, damn, he don't knock one guy out. I'm <laughs> like, wow, that's crazy, bro. And his coach said something about that. His coach was like that, that they're like basically like they're picky on the opponents because cause of that, because Tank is known as a knockout artist. You know, guys like us is no known, known as knockout artists. And if we don't get those guys out, you already know, like. People just start talking shit. Yeah, it's like the expectations change because of what you did in those first sixteen fights, maybe. Yeah, like if you was a like like a Floyd or you know like a guy that wasn't that don't really knock nobody out, and you just winning, you're gonna keep going. Like because yeah. the fans are already expecting that. Like, oh yeah, we we know it's not gonna be out. And if it's a knock, I was like, oh my <laughs> god, you get what I'm saying? Mm. But like when when it's knockout artist, and you don't knock and you don't you're not knocking the guy out, like that's when they they attack you. You know, and I always knew, like, I always know now, like, you only as good as your last fight, literally. Like, Teofimo bust up fucking Josh Taylor's ass. They was praising him, like, oh, my God, he's a fucking man. And now he fought Jermaine Ortiz. Jermaine Ortiz ran around the whole ring, and now fucking Teofimo's a bum. You know, mm. like, he fucking sucks. They took him off the rankings. I, I heard uh, the pound for pound list. I'm like, damn. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Um I, am I right in thinking this? You got this one, and then one more with Matchroom. Yeah, I got two fights with them. Yeah, I got yeah. this one, and I got one more, and I'm a free agent. Are you? Have you had any assurances if if you come through and when you come through against McCrory, who that might be? Like, obviously, you said you were close to the Mungia fight before. Obviously, Canelo's in your sights and whatnot. Um, yeah. Have you? Have you? Has Eddie said like this is what we want to do? Like, do you have a plan? Yeah. Um. You know, I'm supposed to be talking with him this week. I know he don't want to like really talk to me about about that right now because yeah. since it's you know it's fight week and you know it's not really good to like look over your opponent um especially me too i'm not really into that like i'd rather just handle business you know and then you know obviously we can sit down and, and and talk but i know for a fact like he has we have some good things happening this year mm -hmm. you know um, like i said i just gotta look like a superstar this week coming um i gotta perform which i am you know, I'm I'm in my hometown, basically. You know, this is little Puerto Rico over here. Um, there's gonna be a whole bunch of Puerto Ricans, man. Like, this is little Puerto Rico. Like, if you don't know, um, Orlando and Kissimmee turned into Puerto Rico, literally. Like, mm. everybody from Puerto Rico ever since the um, what was the the hurricane uh, Maria, right, babe? Yeah. Hurricane Maria that hit Puerto Rico. Yes. Um, that damn is like Puerto Rico bad. 
a lot of people like escaped and they came out here. So they came out here to Orlando and, and, and to Kissimmee to live. Yeah. You know, so, like this is like the 2.0 version of Puerto Rico. Okay. So that that's uh, so, like... so right. I'm like, I'm in, bro. Like, you don't understand. Mm. Like, I'm fucking, I'm like, I'm like, I can't stop moving. Like, I'm anxious, bro. Cause it's like I'm back home. Mm. Just one more while I've got you. Um, obviously, Canelo was a name that you've been linked with for ages. You've spoken a lot about wanting to fight him. Um, when he boxed John Ryder last year, Ryder said he thinks that Canelo's on the slide based on the 12 rounds he had with him. Do you think there's a chance you might just miss him now? That you might, like, he might be gone before you before you get a chance to fight him? Nah, hell no. I think, um, I, I feel like, you know, that could happen soon, man. Um, you know, I just... I don't think he's retiring anytime soon right now. I think he still has a he still feels and he still has a lot in his tank. He's still young. Um, I think that fight could be one of the biggest fights in boxing. You know, you got Puerto Rico versus Mexico. And you know how that rivalry always ends up. It's crazy. It's mm -hmm. war, is it's two countries rising up against each other, fighting countries like that. You know, we got heart and balls. So um I think that's a fight still in the near future. Um, like I said, I just got to, you know, handle business this week and then we go from there. Looks like he might fight Big Charlo on May the 4th. What do you think of that fight? Yeah, I'm, he, he going to walk you, Charlo. I don't think right now, I think Charlo, you know, I don't think he's been the same fighter. I feel like, you know, he's been battling a lot with himself with, with a lot of demons. Um, I think, you know, I don't take nine away from Charlo. I think he's a, he, he was a, a great champion. Um, I think he's a great fighter. I think right now, like, you know, with us fighters, you know, we go through a lot, you know, our, our, our lives is like roller coasters, you know, when you start getting money and the fame and you just start fighting different type of demons, you know what I'm saying? And um, it's hard to get out of that, you know, especially where he's, where he, how, how deep, and he went, you could see in his eyes, his last fight, like he wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? And, um, I just, I'm, I'm going to be praying for him. I'll pray for him and his family, you know, because at the end of the day, we do got a life after boxing. Like, this is not going to happen. It's not going to be forever, you feel me? And I know he got he got a family, he got kids, so I just hope that he, he gets his mental right, you know, his physically, mentally. Amazing. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate your time. Best of luck with Fight Week. Hope it all goes Thank well. you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Take care.